Thank you, Reverend May. And thank you, Reverend Patterson. Thank you for all of those who have worked hard to make this event the wondrous occasion that it is. And thank you, most of all, Reverend May, for giving those few moments of transition between that incredible rendition of the Battle of the Republic and, and my presentation. It gave me a few moments to be anything but speechless. When Senator Davis read my brief biography, it occurred to me that I am none of those things. I am an Alaska native. I am a Klingit. I am the clan leader of my clan. I want, before I begin, to introduce a member of my family, the wife of newly elected Senator Dan Sullivan, who is going to serve us so well in Washington, D.C. His wife, Julie, is my cousin. Her mother and my wife are first cousins, and I'd like to introduce her if I might, Billy Faith Sullivan. Also, before I get too far along, I want to share something with you that I felt for many, many years. I've had the opportunity to know Congressman John Lewis. I've had the opportunity to meet and spend time with Julian Bond. I've had the opportunity to listen to a Deputy Secretary of the Interior many, many years ago giving what was prepared by his Department of the Interior staff a dry, turgid speech to the Alaska Federation of Natives. And I remember him, this handsome African-American man, beginning to read that speech, and after a few moments, putting it aside and giving us the powerful inspiration of a black Southern Baptist preacher. A moment that I will never forget. And so that leads me to sharing with you a small personal secret. I know that the good Lord, if we work hard enough to be before him in his presence, might listen and maybe even grant a heartfelt wish. And my wish is to come back as an African-American preacher. <laughs> and I want... And I want to have a choir like this. And I want to have a band like this. And I want to have a congregation like this. And we we will reach out to every person of every color, of every denomination, of every faith. And we will work as hard as we can to create the kind of life, the kind of future that the Reverend Martin Luther King stood for and gave his life for. But there will come a time in the week when I might say to my flock, let's gather together just us, just us, and let's raise the roof as only we can do.
Because I know it's there, and I love it so much. You know, I read the newspaper this morning here in Anchorage, and I cried. Another front page story of the abuse of a child. I see the color of unity in my mother's eyes. The beautiful brown eyes of a brown clinket lady who lived at a time when discrimination was the way it was in Alaska. But who was two years after I was born in 1943 to look with hope to her future? Because a lady named Elizabeth Parakovich stood up before the Alaska Territorial Legislature. And as a single individual, but representing many who had helped to bring her to that moment, said, we cannot accept this any longer. And most importantly, neither can you, those who perpetrated it. So my mother saw both the worst in us and the best in us. My mother's life could have been better. But my mother's life was sufficient. For my sisters and I, she urged us to be who we were as Native children. But she also said to us, you will succeed in life only by embracing the world that you find yourselves in and by helping to make that place better for every single one of us. Alaska, as was pointed out, here this afternoon in Anchorage is a diverse and wonderful place. It is unique among our states. In many ways, Alaska is another country in terms of the diversity of its people because it has first people still living in their own places on this land because it has been built by many, many who have come from other places in order to call this place home and to make it better for them and their children. It is a place in which the Spirit of the Lord lives just not within us, but within every creature living and breathing in this land. And it creates the obligation for us as citizens of this place to recognize the color of unity, the color of hope, the color of aspiration in every living being in this place so that we bring not just the society that we choose to build, but the land itself along with us in honor, intact, with integrity, in its majestic beauty, such that we can say to those who come after us, we have delivered to you something of huge promise that has nurtured us. And now it is your obligation 
to grow it and to nurture it for your children. I cried this morning, not just in my heart, but with my eyes, the color of unity. Reading that story about children in a small place, helpless, without recourse, living in a place in which for generations the ability to stand up and fight back, the ability to articulate hope, the ability to say, what about me? For generations, having been pulled from them, from their parents, from their grandparents, but we are in a different place now. And when we see it, we know that we have the capacity in our laws, in our churches, in our spirituality, in our beliefs, to change it. And we will and we must. A hundred years from now, when history looks at Alaska, it will not judge us by the amount of oil we pumped out of Trudeau Bay or how we spent those dollars. It will not judge us by the buildings we built or the monuments we erected. It will judge us by what we accomplished as people, about the society we built, a society in which we can dream as Dr. Martin Luther King did, a society in which every child knows that they are loved, every family knows that they are part of a community that embraces their lives. Every worker knows that their work is valued. Every community knows that what they aspire to by way of citizenry and public service is shared across the state. Every region knows that they have access to the same plethora of resources and opportunity as any other or someone living in the village of Quifluck or the community of Ketchikan, an Anatubic Pass or Anchorage, know that in the light of our laws, in the light of our leadership, in the use of our power, in the delivery of justice, in the carrying out of our acts of public safety, and in the health and caring of our youngest and our eldest, and in the education of our children, that we have created generations of leadership that have not just been good workers and wage earners and professionals and lawmakers and public officials, but each and every day, we believe that we could build a better place for every single one of us, no matter where we live in this great land. That's how we will be judged. Not much else will really matter. Because if we get there, everything else will have been good because we have the strength and the capacity and the character and the vision to make it happen. It will happen in Alaska. Some people have said to me, how could you do what you did to give up the possibility of being governor? Well, lieutenant governor isn't so bad. 
But it has never been about seeking office. We are all on a journey along that arc that Dr. Martin Luther King envisioned for us, an arc that should bend toward justice, and the arc for us as individuals are but small steps over which we know others before us and others after us will continue an incredible journey and it will be good because the arc will always be toward justice and we will achieve it. Thank you so much.